Siskind. This is Jeremy Siskind. Yes, I am Jeremy Siskind. My name is Jeremy Siskind. Uh, and I'm the author of these books, Jazz Piano Fundamentals Book 2, Jazz Piano Fundamentals Book 1, and Playing Solo Jazz Piano. And I'm trying to answer um, some common questions that I have been uh, getting as I, you know, launch my YouTube channel and books and everything. Um, and so this one's a pretty common one. It's, Should jazz pianists study classical piano? And I'd say my general answer on this one is yes, jazz pianists should study classical piano. And I know that for a lot of people, especially if you are, you know, studying jazz a little bit later in life or you're working, it's like, I don't have time to do both. And I get that. Um, so let me explain my reasoning and you can kind of decide what works for you. Of course, uh, you know, Everybody's got to make their own decisions with the finite time that they have. So, first thing is that, you know, there's two elements when you hear the term jazz piano. There's jazz on one hand, and there's piano on the other hand. And jazz pianists are kind of this combination of how good they are at these two things, jazz and piano. And so we really need to be good at the piano side. Um, because you might have the greatest, most jazz appropriate ideas ever, but if you can't execute them well on the piano, they're not gonna be, they're not gonna sound like much. And, you know, even at my level, I've been listening to recordings by people like Benny Green and Fred Hirsch lately, and just noticing so many details of articulation, of pedaling, of these things that of course exists in both jazz and classical, but we think of them as more of the terrain of classical pianists. So, um, you know, as you're studying piano, how you play the instrument, fingering, pedaling, etc. cetera, um, you could do it through jazz, but it's much, much easier and more common to do it via classical music. And the reason for that, in my opinion, is twofold. The first one is that, like by its definition, jazz is a moving target. Meaning that, you know, if you're trying to do something include, that includes or features improvisation, even if it's coming up with your own voicings or coming up with your own melody, it's gonna change every time. So in classical music, we really have the opportunity to consider all of the details. How do you want to move? What parts of your body do you want to use? Um, what articulation, what dynamic shaping are you going to choose? And create all of those details so that you start really ingraining it really deeply into your body, into your ear. With jazz, because we're changing things all the time, um, we're not able to do that without much detail. Plus, we have to be using a large part of our brain um, just to come up with whatever it is that we're gonna play, even if it's kind of simple. Now, some people have written jazz etudes. Oscar Peterson actually has kind of a cool book. Um, I can't remember, it's called something like Minuets, Exercises, Etudes for Jazz Piano. It's got like three or four items in a list. Um, so it is possible to learn these things through jazz, but you have to consider that there's hundreds and hundreds of years, well, there's a few hundred years of piano pedagogy that predate jazz. There's a lot of etudes at all levels for kind of classical or general piano, whereas for jazz, it's actually really hard to think of um, these sorts of exercises, and you might not be able to find some that are particularly at your level. So because there is such a history of piano that predates jazz, probably the best materials that you're gonna find in terms of solid pedagogy to fit your goals and your level are not going to be on the jazz side. And this is coming from somebody who's written <laughs> some things. Um, you know, I would steer you in, in some other directions. Um, now the other part about thinking of studying piano rather than jazz piano is that the history of the piano predates jazz and not only that but it's just incredibly rich <laughs> history 
And for those of you, us who love the piano, um, you know, not um, taking Chopin into consideration, Debussy, Mozart, Beethoven, Ravel, Liszt. I mean, the list goes on and on of people, co composers who knew how to write for the piano. And particularly, if solo piano is something that you're interested in, man, you can learn so much about different ways to divide chords between the hands, about different kinds of voicings, about how to make your hands mobile, um, about pedaling. Uh, there's so much to be learned, especially for the solo pianist, by really delving into the classical piano repertoire. And of course, you know, it should be mentioned that you, most pianists find a huge amount of joy because the music is so good and so rich. Um, which brings me to maybe my last point here, <laughs> we'll see, which is that almost the more I learn about the great jazz pianists, the more that I find out that most of them really did study um, quite a bit of classical piano. Um, I mean, I've heard tales of Oscar Peterson playing the entire well-tempered clavier before performances. I certainly know that Keith Jarrett, uh, he recorded the entire well-tempered clavier and all of Shostakovich's preludes and fugues. We know that Chick Corea played Mozart concerti with orchestras. Um, we know that Brad Meldau, um, you know, is, is collaborating on leader with uh, Rene Fleming. And I, we, we know that he bases a lot of his compositions and harmonic language on Brahms. Um, now, I will say a lot of this skews white um, in terms of racial. I have less information personally about some of the African-American pianists. I have to assume that Hank Jones played a lot of classical music based on his tone. People like Bud Powell and Thelonious Monk, I'm not as sure about. Maybe some of you out there have information. Um, historically, I don't have that information. I do know Bill Evans, um, you know, studied a lot of uh, classical piano, including in college. My, my teacher like somehow had a recording of his classical jury where he played Cacciatorian, I think. Um, as a student of Fred Hirsch, I can tell you that Fred has played a lot of classical music, um, has really studied classical music. So we know that a lot of the great pianists did. Maybe some of them didn't, and that's totally you know possible. Um, but we know that quite a lot of them did. And if we're thinking about you know the folks coming out of the 1920s and 30s, your James P. Johnsons, your even your Duke Ellingtons and your Art Tatums, um, yes, they had ragtime. Yes, they had the things the pianos that came before. But most of what they had to learn was classical piano. Right? Um, so even though I don't have the facts at my fingertips, I have to assume that they, they really knew their stuff in terms of classical music. So, you know, there's no prerequisite, in summary, to playing jazz, jazz piano. You don't have to prove that you can play a Bach fugue in order to uh, play a jazz piano. But most jazz pianists who I know, who I come in contact with, we spend a lot of our time actually nerding out over classical piano in addition to the jazz greats. So if you're aiming for that artist level where you're really playing this instrument masterfully, classical music is usually a part of that journey. So that's my opinion, which of course makes it the correct opinion. Um, if you've made it this far, go ahead and comment uh, pecan, and I appreciate you watching. I will see you soon.